Okay. You know what time it is. It's time for us to finally go down this path. And see what's hiding in Mercury's vault. Under the gun. There was really nobody I could blame this situation on other than myself. The instant I realized what was happening, I was instantly awash with an acute sense of just how dumb I was. I mean, nobody should be in this apartment. If I thought I heard movement, why would my response be to just walk out and look for the source? Obviously, the sound would mean someone had invaded my apartment. Likely someone with ill intent. Probably a threat. In this situation, I should be hiding. I should be desperately thinking of possibilities. The last thing I should do is to blindly walk out of the restaurant without a care in my goddamn bones. Stupid. So stupid. Stupid on a lot of parts, really. I mean, just relying on the fact that nobody should be able to find this apartment as a security measure? Oh, is this a response to Devon's Chapter 6? How simplistic was that? My whole deal was supposed to be having a dozen backup plans, half a dozen what-if protocols. I should have had some extra security on my apartment beyond the shitty lock provided by the hotel. Well, even still, it was dubious if such security would have actually helped me in this particular situation. After all, facing me down was unmistakably Mystery Man. The same Mystery Man who was working with Governor Aisha. Like the same Mystery Man who had tried and failed to kill me that night I failed to swindle Odin Desma. Definitely the same Mystery Man who would have killed Polly Desma were it not for my interference. Yep. That was enough to know I was in real shit. Because this was a professional assassin, facing me down. In the past, I had survived based solely on the element of surprise. But the one caught with my pants down this time was me. I tried to instantly take in as many details as I could. The door to my apartment was closed. The window was, cov the window was covered with blinds. To get here, the mystery man probably entered the normal way and lockpicked my door. In that case, did they know about the sewer entrance? No, they couldn't have. They shouldn't have. They must have. They must have come up the normal way. In that case, though, they should have been caught by the camera. Seen by the staff. Then surely, then surely they wouldn't murder me, right? Not when there was evidence linking back to them. However, that conviction of mine crumbled pretty quickly. Obviously, Mystery Man wouldn't be that sloppy. He was an assassin. Could have gotten around that any number of ways. Maybe he used a fire exit to get in the window of another apartment. Maybe he had used a disguise. Who knows? I should focus on details I could ascertain. Each one might be the difference between life and death. How was the mystery man dressed? Like before, he was wearing a grey hoodie. However, the hoodie wasn't, wasn't zipped up, nor was the hood up. He also wasn't wearing a face mask, so I gotta get a pretty good look at, the, at his face. His chin was unkempt, his eyes red. This was the face of someone unhinged. Someone who had not been getting enough sleep, somebody in a manic state. He had a phone still sticking out of his pocket. Had he just been on call with his employer? Most importantly, I saw the gun he was holding. It wasn't an assassin's gun. It was a standard six-shooter pistol. No silencer. I saw how unstable his finger was. I was clutching the trigger and not in a stable way. The real danger of the situation continued to dawn on me. Oh. This guy was not okay. And he planned on shooting me dead. He was ready to do so any second. If I didn't come up with something fast... I gulped. A second had passed since I started doing my analysis. My mind was speeding along at unnatural speeds. Even still, I had no indication how many lengthened seconds I would get. I need to think. What could I do? How could I get out of this situation? My mind defaulted to physical solutions. Unfortunately, there were not many to be found. I didn't have any weapons in close proximity. Additionally, I was at the exact worst range for this sort of confrontation. I wasn't close enough to the man to make a move. 
he would be able to shoot me far before I could make contact with him. However, I wasn't far enough where the bullet would have long to travel. If I tried to dodge, it would be laughable. The man would just slightly move his hand and shoot me, regardless. What other options did I have? Could I somehow block the bullet? Possibly. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there was nothing on me that served that role. Nothing within close range that could serve that function, either. Alright, let's start doing some desperation thinking. Maybe getting shot was fine. If I moved in the right way, got shot non-faithly, I could survive. It would take a second to load the next shot. I'd use that time to close the distance. Fight off Mystery Man. Get the gun from him, finish him off, voila. Yeah, right. I think I might have gone for this option had I not run into this guy twice before. But those encounters were enough for me to know how impossible this scenario was. This guy, this guy, despite being bested by me twice before, was very good. If he shot, he wouldn't hit a non-lethal area. And even if he did, he'd easily be able to beat me if I tried fighting him. Hell, he'd win the fight even without my gunshot wound. Was at this point a very frightening realization was beginning to dawn on me. A terror that moved through my bones. There was nothing I could do. If this man wanted it, I would die right here, right now. Which meant functionally I really only had one option. Luckily, lucky for me, it was an option that I was, reason I was reasonably good at. Who, who are you? Okay, great. Step one was handled. Mystery Man was open to talking. I had to use this. I can explain. Slowly, I tried pacing to the left. I just reached my... Freeze! Mystery Man held the gun higher, right at my head. Don't you move another muscle. One wrong move and I swear to God I'll blow your brains out. I won't hesitate. Shit! Whoa, whoa, relax. Take it easy there. I'm not trying anything. You got me right at gunpoint. You clearly know what you're doing. I have to be insane, frankly, to try anything. So, you know, ease up. I'm not easing up anytime soon. Eh, that's fair. That's very fair. Okay, then, let's talk. You strike me as an ambitious guy. Got a lot of knowledge. Think I can be of help. Hmm. Start telling me what you know. After that, I'll decide whether it's actually useful. Maybe if you're lucky... You tell me everything I need, I decide I don't shoot you right here, right, right here, right now. Sure thing. It was clear from the tone of his voice that he was lying. He had no intention whatsoever in letting me get out of this alive. His plan was simple. Extort me for all I was worth. Then put a bullet between my eyes. Well, that was fine. I didn't really care about that, to be perfectly honest. What matters was that he was deciding to give me a chance to talk. That was an opening. All I needed to do was change his mind by the end of this conversation. True, I currently saw no clear path toward that. True, if I wanted if I wanted off the subjects he wanted me to talk about too far, he'd likely shoot. True, if I, swift, if I slipped up in any way, I'd like to be as good as dead. Details, details. I had survived worse. Just need to focus up and find a way out. You asked who I was, right? That's a more complicated question than you might think. Uncomplicated. I was! I was getting to that, I swear. Okay, so... Hmm. How should I put this? I wasn't posturing for time. I was actually trying to figure out how best to explain this when I didn't know this guy's motives. What could I assume? Considering everything, the thoroughness of it all, how he appears now. I decided to make a bet. Ultimately, there were two most likely outcomes the mystery man might be acting in the name of. Money or ideals. You could just be an extremely well-paid killer. Or you could be a recently paid killer who legitimately believed in Aisha's vision. My biggest clue as to which motivation may be correct was the overhead conversation I caught in Aisha's office. I concluded that Aisha would not be taking that tone when talking about a pure contract killer. I... I'm working for the people. The people. Who's the people? I don't mean literally. I'm not literally employed by, well, anybody. 
And I'm here because Panthea is broken. You have to see that, right? Olympo was run by devils. The Duats run the streets. There's death and tragedy and anger all around. I come to this city to try because I knew. Because I was told that this place was broken. I knew I was told. That's a bit of a distinction. And now I'm doing the best job I can to fix this city. In the way that only somebody like me could. You want to know who I am? I'm the person trying to help. You're annoying is what you are. I'm not asking for some bullshit. I'm asking for a name. I'm asking for details. Now try again. Who are you? Mystery Man was on edge. However, the anger wasn't stemming from some deep hatred. Not right now. It was the product of a type of confusion. He wasn't actually close to shooting me. In fact, he was further from that than ever. I still had quite a bit of leeway with him. Why don't you try telling me? Huh? You're quite knowledgeable. I've seen you around more than once. You broke into my, you broke into my apartment. You're looking for a name? Guess. You. Come on, just go for it. It'll be fun. I just want to know how observant you are. Locke. At first glance, I'd pick you as Locke. This is what the apartment suggests, at any rate. It's the type of place a low-rate low scammer would occupy. So if I had to guess one name, Locke would come up first. But... But you definitely don't look just like Locke. And your eyes, they're silver. Silver eyes are pretty rare. But Laverna, that detective, she has silver eyes. Very observant. What else? Your arm tattoos. They match Vel's. They're like, a perfect, they're like a perfect match. Considering I had trouble finding a picture of Vels, I kind of doubt you'd be able to copy them perfectly. Right. Quite right, in fact. Okay, so, who are you? You haven't said anything wrong. I am Locke. Just like I'm Laverna. And I'm also Vels. I'm a lot of people. If you're looking for a name, though, you can just call me Mercury. Mercury was the fake alias I defaulted to. The one most of my false papers were connected with. I named all my phone ident identities after trickster gods. Yeah. <laughs> Little on the nose, perhaps, but it's worked well so far. Besides, Panthea was full of strange names, so nobody had even batted an eye so far. I am all those people and more. I'm a hidden entity, changing Panthea for the better. I'm like you. I tried reaching out to Mystery Man. Or instead of absorbing anything I was saying, their face was sour. They didn't quite get what I was saying. I couldn't, exa I couldn't exactly blame them. It was, a, it was a pretty confusing concept. And I had done my job carefully. But that doesn't... How could you be three different people? You've got different jobs, different personalities. I mean, surely. Oh, okay, I didn't see any of you at the same time, but still, I... Wouldn't I have... He kept trying to run into contradictions. Each time he tried to bring something up, he was at a loss for words. Made sense. If he looked into Laverna, looked into Locke, looked into Vels, then he probably knew more than most how none of them had traces leading back to them. Yeah, now you're starting to get it. I admit, I admit it's a bit much at first. Certainly confusing. But it's just my process, it's how I work. When I decided to infiltrate Panthea, I knew I needed different identities to work with. One that could get in good with the police. One that could be used as the face for my scams. One that could navigate the streets of Panthea, get on the ground, info. It was a complicated process, to be sure. But I'm a pretty thorough person. I made sure to give each of my identities a completely different wardrobe with ample makeup to boot. They all had different postures, different personalities. Each one of them had a different, had a, had a distinct voice. And that made sure I could be anyone I want. Yeah, after all, people primarily, primarily use voice to identify others. Over the years, I've gotten pretty good at acting. Of course, hearing everything back, back, back to back like that, you can pr 
probably placed that they're coming for the same person. That was also a big part of it. I made sure that each of my identities rolled with different people. I tried to avoid people who knew him on my cells, bumping into another one of them. And if it is and if it had to happen, I made sure to obscure things with darkness or excuses or make me maybe make the encounter brief. I had a lot of tricks, and in truth I came pretty close to screwing it all up more often than I care to admit it. But in the end I made do. Honestly speaking, things had gone off the rails more than once throughout my crusade. Eris was someone I had to come up with completely spur of the moment. I was still amused the cops actually bought the twins line. Ah. So that was Laverna involved in stealing the data from uh, Olympo HQ. We just spun it up to make a twin. That phony phone call probably helped reinforce things somewhat. And the Thane persona, well, I completely just fell into that ordeal. Though looking back, it had ended up being a pretty useful get. That's... You're insane. You need to be... You need to be to pull off what I've done. That's just it. If I could fully commit, treat them all as different people, stay consistent with the, with the lies, I could create a false reality. That false reality gave me power over every other person in the city. The power of information. Oh, come on. Surely this was unnecessary. Maybe. Absolutely not. I was hunting a, was hunting a multifaceted opponent who made use of proxies and lures. Someone wise enough to the workings on every level of Panthea. Only by throwing out a similar amount of disinformation was I able to tear rifts in the fabric that they weaved. <laughs> Fine. You've pulled the wool over the eyes of everyone here. Well, guess what? That only got you so far. Now I know. And guess what? You were three of my bullets. So, thanks. You just made my job a whole lot easier. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> you know, I wanted to gather all five of you in a single room and end things in a single blur. I thought that I thought that goal was impossible, but really, three out of five isn't that bad. Ugh. This was kind of what I feared. My explanation could buy me some time, but if at the end of the day, mystery man still wanted to kill me, revealing the truth would only do me so much good. I felt confident there was some escape sequence possible. This guy was unhinged. The fact that he was t taking, talking this much clearly indicated that he was willing to accept new information, willing to have his motivations warped. But I still couldn't find a strong angle. But I needed to keep myself alive for the short term. Find new things to talk about. Whoa, whoa. Let's, 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 hold on a second. If you kill me now, things are going to be bad for you. That pistol. I can, see, I can see that it doesn't have a silencer. It means once you shoot, a lot of bad people are going to come running here. You may not have seen it, but there was a camera set up over there. I'm moving my arms, I'm pointing toward the door. Leave now. You'll definitely be caught. There's also a camera down at the front desk, as well as a witness. I'm aware. Shit, so I did it normally. I'm sure, though. Soon enough. But this bird will catch up with me. But your apartment has a window. I'll be able to get away for now. I'll live long enough to complete my mission. That's all I care about. Oh, come on now. Does that seem uh, a bit short-sighted? It is. But you made it so I didn't have a long-term future. Shit. Hey, hey. This is about the Aja thing. Look, I still haven't put out those photos. Hmm, yeah. Yeah, I still haven't put up those photos. 
You totally can... I stopped the mic tracks. This is probably an argument I could win. But I thought ahead a bit. And realized that it probably wouldn't lead in any direction that was particularly helpful. In fact, it'd be more likely to cement my fate. I needed another out. Okay, okay, wait. I'm just a little dude. You said I was three of your bullets. That pistol holds six bullets. So who do, doesn't that mean there's another three targets? Two. Two targets, okay, well, still. As you know now, I'm a pretty resourceful individual. I bet I have a way for you to use... For you to get to the other targets. Don't shoot me right away, I can help with that. Good. Let's do that. Good. Cool. Now just tell me who your other two targets are and I can help out. Let's not do that. Bang. You told Mystery Man was hesitating for some reason. He was clearly unwilling to give me information of any kind. Ugh. How unhelpful, how unhelpful could he be? Whatever. I'll just fill in the blanks myself. Doing so might win some points. Okay, I can, okay, I can guess if you'd like. Laverna, Locke, Vels. We tried to kill two of them. I'm not quite sure how Laverna ties into this. Maybe she's just a general nuisance. But if the quotient, if the common denominator is people you've tried to kill, well, I can think of at least two other people you've failed to finish. So then, all the other, so then are the other two bullets Krish and Polly? Mystery Man just nodded. Okay, good. That felt like the most obvious answer, but I couldn't be certain. Alright. Well, guess what? Normally getting to either of them would be super hard. But I can help with both targets. Yeah? Yeah. I haven't written it anywhere, but I do know where Krish is staying. And Vils has a good rapport going on with Polly. I can definitely lure him out for you. And what do you know? You can, you can get your five target party just like that. Isn't that exciting? Hmm. Is that right? It is! Okay then. Let's start to see some proof. We can start with Krish. Tell me where they're staying. Sure. Will do. Totally. Before that, I got I got just one little question. Yeah? I didn't actually have a question. <laughs> I was looking for an off-ramp. Complying with Mystery Man had bought me more time. But just playing into his hands will only get more people killed. If I actually wanted to change anything, I'd need to start making affirmative steps in this conversation. The question was, what should those steps be? Think. Think. The problem I was running into was a lack of knowledge of my opponent. This is the perk of being an unknown, I suppose. Hard to get a read on them. I didn't know who they were. How could I come how could I convince them of anything? Especially when they didn't want to be convinced. I needed an in, I needed a hook. I need to figure out just who the mystery man was. Come on, think. Considering all the information I've gathered, shouldn't I have some idea? Well, I know he worked for Aisha. Maybe that was a place to look. But no, I need something better than that. What information did I have on Mystery Man? Ah. Polly's reaction from when Laverna interviewed him after the assassination attempt. He hid it better than later, when Vels bugged him about it, but back then, Polly was still frazzled. He clearly knew the attacker. But didn't turn on him. Who, 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 could, who could fit that bill? Rather knowing what I knew about Mystery Man, what connection could he have to Polly where Polly may recognize him but wouldn't sell him out? After another moment's thought, it came to me. Back when Laverna was investigating the info theft, Art slipped up, referencing her brother, who was in interested in magic that clearly wasn't Polly. Wow, reference to part one of this series. We're in what, part 47, 48 now? Additionally, in the text logs I found on Polly's burner phone, Art implied that Polly had failed a family member in the past, a sibling. The conclusion I reached was slightly wild, but it was the one thing that made sense. Question, ask it. You... You're a Desma, right? Mystery Man didn't look quite as surprised as I would have thought he'd be at my revelation. However, the reaction was still unmistakable. I had hit a bullseye. Right. The third Daisman brother. Figures. Odin's a really shitty parent, huh? 
Could I ask how you guessed? Let's just say having a bunch of identities to play off each other eventually pays off. Polly recognized you, but didn't turn you in. wonder why that is. Is it perhaps because he feels guilty? Guilty at the time when you, when you needed his help, but he didn't reach out. Hmm. Is that perhaps related to your current status as the Forgotten Desma? Owen's a real bastard, I, learned, I know that much. I can't imagine you've had a good life to end up where you are right now. You're at a low point, and neither Art nor Polly reached out to you. That can't have felt. That can't have felt good. Odin, the psychopath father that he is, decided you didn't live up to his legacy and tried to cut you out. Am I right? Odin's real, son Odin's real sons are Art, Polly, and Devon. The name's Devon. Devon, huh? Nice name. It's okay. God, I gotta say, I feel bad for you. Growing up with Odin, with Art and Polly, that must have been real rough. I guess in a weird way, Odin disowning you helped out, right? Helped out. How do you figure? I imagine someone obsessed with legacy did his best to erase you from as many records as possible. For an invisible man, I'd think that an asset. And there was a slight smile across Devin's face. Not bad. You're right, I have turned Odin's grave. Odin's greatest insult into one of my greatest strengths. Clever. Real clever. So? Huh? So I'm Devin Desma. You figured it out. Good for you. What does that matter? What does that matter? Devin, you're killing me here. Not yet, I haven't. You. You. You're funny. That's funny. Keep talking. Right, look, so growing up in the Desma household was, I can only imagine, a complete hellscape, right? Odin was an abusive as shit father. Art was a complete dick. Polly was a selfish dick. You were surrounded by opulence and wealth, and yet all that did was make you feel more inadequate. Am I getting any of this right? Devin didn't respond. I took that as a cue that I was more or less reading things correctly. That all sounds super warranted. I mean, your hatred of it. All three of those people are scum. I get separating yourself from them. Even still, you probably harbor a deep resentment toward them, right? Towards Limpo? Towards what it represents? I mean, you're trying to kill Polly without much reservation. By my metric, Polly might be the least offensive of the three. Surely you want people to see the people who've ruined your life suffer, right? If that's the case, I'm not your enemy. I'm your ally, Devin. Ally. Exactly. Like I said, I came here to tear down Olympo. And I'm well along the process of doing it. Just a bit further and you'll see your brothers and fathers squirm. Fathers? As their company falls to ruin. Isn't that ideal? Don't you want your revenge? For a moment, Devin didn't say anything. But his hand trembled. His face was flushed with emotions. Then he took a deep breath out. He was past it. I don't have any feelings toward my past, my past family. That includes love. That includes hate. People can do whatever they want towards them. They can help them. They can hurt them. That won't sway me. You can't be serious. You take me for someone who jokes around a lot. It's not. Do you think that family did to you? You're okay with letting them stay in power? You're fine to just let them continue destroying other li other lives? I put, I have put the Desmas in the past. They don't motivate me anymore. If anything, I should be grateful to them. It was my time in their household that led me to where I am today, serving a higher cause, a higher power, if you will. Doing actual good. Yet my initial mode of read on Devon was more accurate than I could have ever imagined. But this was good. I got him away from talking about shooting me in the face. Always a plus. He was now discussing things like blame and better causes. At this point, I felt I had a pretty good download on Devon. 
He was traumatized and made to feel worse, worthless by the Daismus. Something happened. He was excommunicated from the family. Then, broken, he was picked up by Aisha and brainwashed into being her little killer servant. I wonder where she got that idea. Anyway, he wasn't being motivated by any semblance of logic at this point. He wasn't even being motivated by orders, I had to guess. His crusade was, was a self-destructive attack in response to a clash between his own beliefs and those he had, that had been ingrained in him. Were not these five targets he was choosing to blame, I suspect he might have taken it out on himself. Anyways, this meant that most of the standard bargaining techniques I had at my sleeve were dead and moot. I could think of exactly one way to stop Devin from putting a bullet in my skull. I had to break him out of his devotion to Aisha. Ooh. Normally, I, I'd, have, I'd have no chance at doing that in a single conversation. Devin was already acting on his own, already off kilter. If there was ever a chance to break through to him, this was it. Greater good. You're referring to Governor You're referring to Governor Aisha, correct? Killing for her. Devin squinted his eyes. Yeah. That's right. Governor Aisha is going to make the city a better place. A place worth being proud of. She was using me to do it. Until you stepped in. You blackmailed her with those photos. You made her lose faith in me. Now, now I have nothing. Whoa, whoa, Devin! You don't have nothing. Yes, I do. I gave everything to Miss Aisha's cause. Not your life. Not yet, at least. And so long as you're still standing, you can find new things to live for. I mean, look at me. I'm just a funky dude. Hi. I lost everything. I fell into a pit of extreme despair. Look at me now, better than ever. Being held at gunpoint. Valid. Look, my point is, you can still do good in the world. I know you want to, or else you wouldn't even be hearing me out. Honestly, I think it's a good thing I, I, should, let, I should let you go. The noise turned to outright hostility. And how exactly do you figure that? Because your life should be given to a good cause. Governor Aisha is anything but that. Shut up! Governor Aisha is making Panthea a better place. Is that right? Okay. How? Huh? How is she making Panthea a better place? Give me specific policy details. Tell me how those actual policies will improve the city substantially for the majority of its citizens, to the point that it justifies the actions taken up until this point and the risks that they pose. That's... <laughs> Look, I'm not smart about all that stuff. It's completely not the point. Aisha is cooperating with Olympo. She's keeping people like your father and brothers in power. Is that for the best? What about the Duots? She's allowing them to exist. Hell, she's worked hard. She's worked hand in hand with them. Dangerous criminals, ones who don't give a shit about the good of this city. Necessary evils. She's fixing this election, and yet she's still using you to assassinate potential enemies. Only a few. Only a few, huh? Right, because the Cock Robin killings are largely are largely consistent of Ariane planting fake evidence on unrelated cases, right? Yeah. All right, so what happens to those cases? Huh? Well, obviously they can't get solved if, they work, if they're the work of the Cock Robin killings. How many dangerous criminals were left free keeping this myth of yours alive? It has to be done. Why? Working with Olympo, allowing the Duats to roam, handling threats. It's all in the effort of eliminating conflict. Conflict is what gets in the way of progress. Conflict is the enemy. Conflict is the base of democracy. Yeah. Your whole premise is backwards. Allowing titans like Olympo and the Duats to roam unfettered, killing people. You're not eliminating conflict. People are still being harmed by these practices and trying to fight it. All you're doing is removing the ability to resist. Thus removing the conflict. That's... You know, we're getting into semantics here. My point is I get it. Conflict can be painful. It can lead to truly disastrous results, believe me. But it's also human. If conflict is absent, then things go unopposed. Power is unchallenged. Basically saying that the best, the ones who currently weird power, they deserve to shape Panthea how they wish. That's what your father, Odin Daisby, believes. Is it what you believe? 
Okay, okay. Let's say for a second you're right. There are downsides to, to democracy in a dictatorship, which is what you're supporting. You do get things done faster. Sometimes you need the strength to make change. Yes, exactly. To make change. What change has there been recently, exactly? There's a bunch of changes that have been happening, a bunch more coming. You know the real danger of dictatorships, of giving someone too much power? Because the truth is, most people can't wield that power responsibly. Even if they think they can, once they have it, all bets are off. You know, before Aisha, there was another person who tried this whole faux dictatorship racket. His name was Zahak. No of him. I got a blank look. I had to assume Devin didn't. Yeah, well, he also thought he knew what was best for the city. He was a political theorist, see? He had a lot of thoughts about what would do the most good for the most people. When he was in power, the city changed massively. It was transformed from a shithole to what we see today. Just in the years he was around. See, exactly. You need power to make change. Hmm. Well, there's certainly an argument about Zahak's morality, how much we can judge him. I'm not interested in him. I'm interested in his apparent successor, Aisha. What exactly is her vision for the city? One well, without conflict or strife, one that supports the little guy. You mean one without conflict that opposes her? Does propping up Olympo support the, support the little guy? You're not... Shut up. Aisha's not changing anything. She's maintaining the status quo. She's maintaining her power. Your change takes time. It takes careful, del careful deliberation. I just had time. I just had many, many years without conflict and hasn't gotten much done. Stop talking. You know, I find your hatred of conflict interesting. I assume you got that from Aisha. What's to you? I wonder if that, that philosophy has anything to do with Aisha's husband's death, the result of a callous gang war. That would certainly bias you towards thinking that an imperfect peace is preferable to a bloody war. Except, few who live in Panthea would call the current times peaceful. Maybe that's what motivates Chief of Police Ariane. Maybe that motivated Aisha for a time. Maybe when she got into politics, she had ideals. Whatever those were, she has long since abandoned them. Shut up! Devin, think about it. What has she really been doing? If she's only taken the absolute necessary measures for a greater good, then okay. I understand that. But in that case, why does she have such a humongous sum of cash tucked away for personal use? What? When I met with her as Locke, I tried seeing what my bluffing could uncover. Turns out my hunches were spot on. She's all but admitted to the fact that she'd been stockpiling cash for herself for a long time. Which makes sense, you know, she's already got the will of the people. A rigged election and an, ass and an assassin on her side. She doesn't really need Olympo's help. If she wanted, she could make moves against them. But she doesn't, because she's forgotten whatever noble cause she began fighting for, if she ever had one. Gotta shoot. Keep talking. I'll shoot. I can't claim to know perfectly what's going on in her mind, Devin. If you had to ask me, she's become blinded with her own power. Obsessed with keeping her cash, her position, her title. So obsessed, she no longer knows why she clings to it. I don't think it's pure greed. If it was, she'd be enjoying it a lot more than she does. Clearly, she works a lot, has a lot of care in her job. At some point, Devon, she lost perspective. Getting this power was no longer a means to an end. It was an end itself. It's why she finds every single angle possible and exploits it. Why she goes over the top, kills any slight threat, takes any beneficial deal. She's a monarch defending her throne, plain and simple. I warned you. I'm warning you. That's why she's so opposed to change. Any change might threaten her reign. Sure, she might tell you. Hell, she might tell herself she's going somewhere with all this. But if serving some ideal always comes second to maintaining every inch of power she has, nothing will be done. Shut up, shut up, just be quiet. Do you know anything about her? Don't try and give me all this shit when all you've ever been was against Miss Aisha. You never once believed in her. I'm just tearing her down senselessly. Devin, please, think for a moment. Why are you defending her? Actually, think about it. What made you so loyal to her? No, no. You're lying. You're a liar, that's what you do. Your whole MO is to manipulate people, to bend them to your will. Why should I trust a word that comes out of your mouth? This all, it's all just bullshit trying to corrupt me. Corrupt you? Devin, hear yourself. Miss Aisha, she... She gave me a second chance. She saw the good in me, the use in me that nobody ever, else ever would. She depended on me, she needed me. 
She's not what you're saying. She's kind. She cares about people. You don't know how much she's grieved when Secretary Ganny died. You don't know the struggle she went through. You're saying that all this time she was just manipulating me. It can't be. I mean, that all these years I'd been... Devin didn't have the strength to finish the thought. Devin, you're right. Be angry. You're a victim in all this. But you're also wrong. Nobody else would see the good in you. You only think that because your other, only other real reference was the Daismas. I promise, if you told your whole, honest story to any other person, they'd sympathize with you and try to help you out. And quit it with all this talk about yous. People aren't tools. The only use someone needs is to themselves. They need to be able to use their body to live a good life and a story. People aren't tools. That's rich coming from Mercury. But... Sweet Shimano, uh, real people aren't tools. Uh, fake identities, on the other hand. Uh, people I befriended while I was in those fake, fake, fake identities, they're probably tools too, but... Uh, we're in convincing mode here. We're not in full honesty mode. You only think that this this way because you've been warped by that asshat Odin to thinking of people as objects, but that's bullshit. I know you already know this. That's not... You can't be. You know I'm right. You just don't want to accept it. Your mind is trying to trick you right now, Devin. To make you doubt yourself, to question what I'm saying, to refuse the truth that you know. Because you know what? The hardest thing in life is to, is to admit when you're wrong. Actually changing your mind takes strength. You know you think that after everything you've done, all these years you've wasted. Aisha isn't who she says she is. And all that has gone to waste. That if it's true, what I'm saying, that you are actually a bad person. That you have nothing left. That's not true. For one, you're a victim here. Just like every other person. And the idea that since you don't have anything to cling to onto now that you've... That because you spent so long working for Aisha that breaking away from that is useless. That idea is just a fallacy of sunk costs. Extreme example, I'll admit, but that's all it is. The past. No, your past doesn't really matter. The actions you took aren't tattooed on your soul. Life is in some competition, where you have to put all your years to good use. It doesn't matter one bit if for the last few years you've been in a coma, or a drained serial killer, or saving lives as a humanitarian. The past you might have was well the past you might as well have been a completely different person. The only thing, the only thing at all that matters now is how you choose to proceed from here. What you choose to do after this. If you do what you earnestly believe is the right thing, then nothing nothing else matters. Not who you not who you're of use to. Not what you've done in the past, not what others believe. You'll be doing the right thing. End of story. Damn it, my head wasn't faltering in the slightest. His expression was cold, stone cold, unflinching. But as he looked at locked eyes with me, I could see the battle within him. And then I realized a truth I really didn't like. In the end, I couldn't force him to reach the truth. So this was something he'd have to come to himself. I get it. I think I'm just some sleazy trickster. But I'm saying anything I can to save my own skin. That nothing I've said is genuine. That, that's how you're trying to, trying to justify ignoring everything I've said. Okay. Then don't listen to me. Don't listen to Odin or Aisha or anyone. Just listen to your own heart. Honestly think about what you want to do. What you think is right. I mean, you've worked for Aisha for far longer than I have. You probably know more. If Aisha's lost her way, then you should be able to tell. If you think about it without averting negative thoughts. I just want you to really consider all of this by yourself. You come to the conclusion that I'm wrong. 
Aisha's still worthy of support. Than some scumbag that deserves to die. Then shoot me right here, right now. I can't stop you. But, make sure that decision is actually yours. If you're going to kill me, you at least owe me the assurance that you're killing me yourself. And as the pistol began to slightly sway, Devin had stopped looking at me. Instead, his eyes were clenched shut. I see tears getting through his eyelids, though. Technically, he had taken his eyes off of me. The idea of making him move now, that he wasn't paying attention as much, did cross through my mind. However, even his eyes were closed, his ears sure weren't. I felt as though if he caught me taking advantage of this moment, he, pro he would probably really would just shoot me. And all the work would have gone to waste that we just put in trying to turn him. Instead, we just stood there. I waited with bated breath. Come on, Devin. You can be better. And given it my all with that spiel. Break free. Devin opened his eyes once more. But he turned around and began pacing away. Ah! Oh, thank God. I really thought I was dead just there. Like, I had no faith that this was actually going to work. Really, I was really just throwing out anything I could thought I might placate him. Jesus Christ. I almost had a heart attack. Whew. Damn, that was pretty good, this, huh? Devin circled back around, pacing. Thank you. Really, thank you, Devin. You're doing the right thing. I'm glad. What should I do now? Huh? There's nothing left for me. What should I... What do I do? What should you do, huh? Don't you think that's a question you should answer yourself? Devin looked at me for a moment. And he looked down, lost in contemplation. Finally, he looked back up, a glint of determination in his eye. Got it. Okay, good. What'd you settle on? If you, uh, don't mind me asking. Aisha. I'm not content to just walk away from everything. I need to speak with her. I need to figure out. No. She needs to answer for everything. I'll figure out what to do from there. I nodded. That sounds pretty good. That sounds like a plan. Not going to thank you. That's fine. As far as I'm concerned, the only reason I'm not killing you is because I don't see a good reason to, and I'd probably be caught. I still don't like you, and I still don't think you're a good person. Understood. You told me to try and ignore my spy, to ignore the misleading voices, and really ask myself what I, why I'm doing what I'm doing, if it's the right thing. I think maybe you should do that, too. Oh, don't worry. I already went through that. And doing this to tear down the corruption of Panthea. I'd make a little cash all the while. Hmm. Anyway, like it or not, I think you did help me get over something I think I've been grappling with for a while. So I guess I should probably warn you. Warn me? Me coming here, this wasn't just a spur of the moment thing. I mean, yes, on my own I've been looking to kill you. Or at least three different, three different of, three of your identities. But I was sent here by an augmented voice. I was given the location. Told that if I just shot you and looked around your apartment, I'd get what I wanted. And they also said that they had other ways of handling you. Really? Shit, the moves against me were becoming far more explicit. This way, it was only a matter of time. I don't know who this person is. But you have an enemy, Mercury. One far more dangerous than me. Thank you, Devin. That means a lot. Of course, I knew that already. That'd be no, I could pin this particular life-threatening encounter on them as well. All right, well, Devin looked around awkwardly. Guess I'll get going now. Uh, okay. Stay safe. You too. With this strange, strained encounter between two strangers over with, Devin left my apartment. I was alone again. Safe, for the time being. I collapsed onto my couch. Was this the closest I'd come to death? No, the time of the man jet was still probably my closest shave. Still, this was pretty bad in its own right. I was really running out of time. I had to start tying up loose ends immediately. I mean, if the god has my, if the god had my apartment. Wait a second. How did they figure out my location? They've been very fucking thorough in keeping it a secret. What the hell? I racked my brain for a possible answer. I must have learned it recently. Else someone else something would have been done sooner. Oh motherfucker. I went over to my laptop and took out the USB. Grabbed a nearby knife and tried prying it open. Sure enough, 
mechanical things. Okay, it turns out I didn't actually know what a tracking device looked like, but I was pretty fucking sure that this was how they located me. Motherfucker! Who the hell did they think, did they, think where they were messing with? They really planned this whole thing out? I mean, maybe it's just the mix of an insurance policy and a happy accident. Is this taking place after... Eris's Chapter 7? And is that the USB we got from Kane? I couldn't be sure. All I knew for certain was what I had already known. I was dealing with a pro. What was even on that stupid USB anyways? I checked my laptop. It looked like the file had successfully been transferred. I opened it up. Hmm. Despite taking an obnoxiously long time to transfer, it appeared to be just a simple text file. A simple text file with an encrypted lock. Fucking... I didn't have time for this. Knowing what I knew, was it even worth opening? Ah, fuck it, I was too curious. I'd just be fast. Well, okay, here we go. This was shockingly... I'm pretty sure I got this. Yeah, this was that's this came together shockingly easily. There we fucking go. It's a bunch of gibberish. A text file full of gibberish. The only decipherable bit, decipherable bit is, was at the top. Use the N key. N key? The hell? Was this some sort of cipher? My mind began trying to put the pieces together. Then I just shook my head. No. Oh. Thinking about it a bit closer, if this whole thing was really was a trap, then this whole mess of letters was likely meant to stall me for long enough for Devin to get here. It could have been the reason for the encoded lock. If it wasn't always meant as a trap, I doubted there'd be anything useful. Whichever the case, I needed, I needed to get ready. Next step of this plan should be kicking into action any minute now. I was a bit concerned about how my opponent was getting more brazen and dangerous. It was entirely possible that they would screw things up further. But at this point, I was in too deep. I was already in the middle of fulfilling J.C.'s last wish. Last request that she entrusted me. Either Panthea's god would kill me, or I'd burn it down first. I got a gold key. I have nothing to say here. All I have is my respect for Mercury. Mercury is an elite breed. Mercury reminds me of myself. Uh, all right. That is that. So that funnels us into a finale of Devin confronting Aisha, which is very interesting. Yeah, so Mercury is protag. In many ways, Mercury is protag. So. Yeah, we will see where that goes. Until next time, though, until then, thanks for watching.